Hey, welcome to the video today. Today we're gonna to be talking about the five most important things to start winter backpacking. And guess what? A lot of them are things that you can adapt from your current system and shouldn't take too much extra budget. So if you're interested in getting winter backpacking, you wanna know the five most important things that I think you need to pay attention to, stay tuned. If you're new to the channel, we're Outdoor Vitals. My name is Tayson and we're doing all of these videos and we have this channel basically to help you get outdoors more comfortably and confidently. So if you're interested in that, make sure you're subscribed and make sure you also click that little bell notification so that we can notify you when we put out these new videos. Okay, let's dive right in. All right, so I narrowed it down to just five things that I think are the most important things that you need to have or need to adapt your system to get backpacking in the winter. It's not gonna be that hard and a lot of them really are adaptations and aren't gonna cost you a bunch of money. If you're more interested in in-depth details about some of this, we do two separate episodes on our podcast, the Live Ultra Life podcast. So if you wanna go check that out, you can and we'll go in more depth. But this is gonna give you the basics and a lot faster. All right, so for number one, this one is something we've talked about kind of recently, but it's a closed cell phone. Many of you guys have a three season pad already, but if you're going into the four season, a very simple investment such as this, buying you know, a $20 closed cell phone pad or something like that is going to allow you to stretch out your pad's value and get you into colder temperatures. You may have a three season sleeping bag. You can probably just layer up and sleep and get through that into colder temperatures, but your pad will not be as forgiving. If you haven't seen our video on this, go check it out up here. We go in a lot more depth on this. All right, so number two on the list is insulated boots and gaiters. Gaiters can be pretty important. A lot of times I'm running the sawtooth pants and using the trap at the bottom and the shoelace clip. That works pretty well, but if I'm going into deep snow, I will bring the gaiters. But more importantly are the boots. Insulated boots, I think sometimes are an expense people are not sure they want to invest in. I picked these up on clearance on an outlet section from Under Armour. I didn't expect much out of these boots. I spent like $100 on them and they've been great though. They have an 800 gram insulation, primal off insulation in them and they've made a world of difference. Speaking from a guy who has had frostbite twice in his feet and lost feeling for a month to two months at a time in some of my toes, trust me, these are worth their weight in gold. You can't just switch socks out in the winter and expect to stay super warm. Maybe if it's like one day, you can try to pull that off, but insulated boots are worth their weight in gold. So number three on the list today is gonna be insulated gloves. Make sure that you have a good set of waterproof and insulated gloves. These ones I really like because they're kind of half mitten, half regular glove. They give me some level of dexterity, but they're super warm. And I can actually pull my finger out of this area and shove it into the mitten if I'm getting cold. And then I'm back to a mitten. Um, these are super awesome, but they keep your hands dry, which is really, really important. And they've got that insulation in them. I'm typically running a liner underneath here. Some of you might already have a liner. This is another area where you may have to invest a little bit of money, but having a waterproof and insulated glove is super important. And another thing that I forget a lot of times in that accessory, Accessory, asset, accessory um, category is a face mask. So this is a wool face mask. And a lot of times, because I have a beard, I get away not using these things. But when it gets to winter, especially if there's any kind of wind going on, it makes a world of difference. So this is a little bit of a sneak peek. This is actually our wool buff. We've got some things coming down the pipeline. I won't say too much about it, but stay tuned. If you're a Live Ultralight member, you're going to see things sooner than other people. So stay tuned on that. One of the biggest reasons that I like face mask for is the fact that when it's blowing wind and whatnot, I can cover up my cheeks right there. And this one I can tuck up in my hat because the way that we designed this thing, just having that small layer of fabric on your face is going to make a world of difference. Plus, I always recommend sleeping in something like this to keep that chill off of your face. When it gets cold, when it gets down to like zero degrees, your face is just gonna get cold and this even this tiny little bit of fabric is gonna make a world of difference all right so before I move off of accessories I also wanted to note my hat here um, about time we finally got a branded hat back on the website so these just went on the website so if you're interested in those go check them out we've also got it in a blue color okay that wraps up accessories all right let's talk for a minute about base layers these are very critical but they're especially critical in the fourth season in fact on a trip that we did a couple years back one of the employees came out with us and he had i believe it was a shirt just like this it was a blended cotton shirt he was sitting in his tent he was feeling really cold he had all his layers on i said hey I won't, I won't call you out on camera, I guess. Hey, so-and-so, did you take that cotton shirt off that I saw you wearing earlier in the day? And he said, no. And I said, you ought to take it off. And he said, no, I don't want to strip down and, and take this cotton shirt off. I've already got all my layers on and I'm already cold. And I said, do it. I promise you it'll make a difference. So he went, he stripped down to his shirt, took it off, put all his layers back on. And he said, you know, that made a significant difference. Easy thing to do, just avoid cotton in the winter. If you want my favorite base layer system, that is by far the Dragon Wool piece. 
You get merino wool next to your skin. You get that polyester jersey face that's going to take the moisture away from your body. It's a fantastic base layer and it works amazing in the winter. Those just hit the website and basically they sold out already. Like they've already sold through them, but we are getting a second shipment in January around the 10th. Watch the website if you are interested in getting your hands on some of this dragon wool. And note for some of you that might be more interested in budget items, look at fleece. One thing that I did as a lot as a kid that actually did work was I'd wear my fleece pajamas. I'd take my Christmas pajamas and layer them under pan. Or if I had a fleece top, I'd layer that. Fleece does extremely well. It's gonna be more heavy and bulky than some of the other like technical, more expensive items, but it works. It works when it's wet, if you sweat, different things, it's gonna stay warm. That's your budget tip for this video. All right, we are on a tip number five for getting started in winter backpacking and definitely trying to stay warm out there. And that tip is going to be get a high loft insulation piece. You don't want something that's not very lofty or that might be a windbreaker or might look good around the town. What you really need is something with loft. This is the regulator down jacket. You can see the loft in here. The loft tech jacket's gonna be great. The regulator jacket's gonna be great. The regulator jacket's gonna be a little bit better for the colder temperatures. And then obviously both of them are gonna have those pit zips. Anyways, what I end up doing a lot of times too is I'll hike in the in the loft tech jacket. Then when I get to camp, I'll layer this one on top of it. If you have both of them, that's great. If you can only afford one of them, then maybe layer up some fleece underneath and then get one of these two pieces to work. But you absolutely need a high loft insulation piece when you're winter backpacking. So make sure that is in your kit. So if you want more information on layering systems, click up here. We did a video pretty recently about my favorite layering system and why I think it is the best. It's, it's something I've dialed in for years, but if you're interested in that, go click up here and watch that video about layering systems for the winter. So we've ran through the five things that I think are critical for you to get your hands on or maybe adapt your systems to go into the winter season. The last thing I just wanted to say is just remember a lot of the stuff that you use the rest of the year can be used the winter season, such as something like this. This is my rain jacket. It. This is just a super light summer rain jacket. But guess what? I use it on my winter trips. So you don't have to go out and buy a bunch of things to get winter backpacking. You just got to know your gear. You got to trust your gear. And you just got to get out there and do it. All right, so that's it. That's the five things I think are critical to get winter backpacking. If you found value in this video, make sure to give us a thumbs up. If you have comments or questions, make sure to leave us a comment. We'd love to hear from you. Maybe there's a sixth thing that you think is critically important. Make sure to drop that in the comments. All right, thanks for tuning in. Make sure you're subscribed and we'll see you on the next one.